I'm Tim Vipond, co-founder of CFI. Welcome to Capital IQ Fundamentals. In this course, we're going to look at a variety of industry roles that use Capital IQ on a regular basis. We'll show you how to use Cap IQ for investment banking, equity research, investment management, credit, private equity, venture capital, and for corporations. In this course, we'll be logging into Capital IQ and walking through step-by-step -step with screen demonstrations, the most popular and common functions that are used in Cap IQ. So we'll be looking at companies, research, markets, screening, charting, coverage, and much more. Finally, we'll end with a very popular and frequently used plugin for Excel. If you don't have access to Capital IQ, we've got you covered. In the next lesson, we will explain how you can get free trial access to Capital IQ through CFI's full immersion program. Throughout this course, we will be watching video lectures, which will show you how to navigate the Capital IQ platform and utilize the various features and functions commonly used by finance professionals. At the end of the course, you will take a qualified assessment to test what you've learned. We've got a lot of exciting stuff to cover, so let's jump in and get going. We are extremely excited to announce that as a CFI student, you can get free trial access to S&P Capital IQ through the partnership that we've created between CFI and Cap IQ. In order to activate your free trial access to Capital IQ, you'll have to be enrolled in CFI's full immersion program. You can do that through your student dashboard. Once you're enrolled in the full immersion program, you'll be able to self-activate your free access Capital IQ trial account. We hope you enjoy following along with your very own account. All right, here we are on the Capital IQ login page accessed from CapitalIQ.com. In order to activate your free trial Cap IQ account, simply enroll in our full immersion program and you can get free trial access. As soon as you log in, you're taken straight to, under the My Capital IQ section, your dashboard. And your dashboard is automatically populated with information like top stories from around the world, investment research coverage that may be relevant to you. Here we have government bond yields, some more top stories, and then an equity market overview, as well as some specific indices and their performance. So there's a lot that you can look at here to quickly get a sense of what's going on in the markets. And you can actually customize your entire dashboard here by adding widgets. That's what we're going to look at in the next lesson. But just to get you logged in and ready to go, you are going to land here on your dashboard section of my cap IQ. Later in the course, we'll be going through all of these sections of the menu, looking at companies, research, markets, screening tools, charting tools, coverage, which is relationship management, managing projects and managing portfolios. And then finally, we will move into the very popular plugins for Excel and PowerPoint. All right, since the dashboard is where you land when you first log in to Capital IQ, let's look at how you can customize it. Click in the bottom corner here on Dashboard, then Widgets, and you'll see a bunch of options here that give you some ideas. So let's say we want to add constituent performance and say stock performance, as well as uh, earnings activity. And let's just start with that for now. So you can see how I've added these to my dashboard. So right away here, I can see earnings activity from a comp set that I've previously created. And we'll look later at how to create a comp set. Then you will see here stock performance based on a comp set and constituent performance for your comps as well. So let's go back here to the dashboard. This time click edit. And you can select a layout if you want to add columns. You could have columns. Let's try that. Going back in here one more time to widgets. Global markets, actually. Let's go to global markets, uh, currency rates, indicator chart, and market overview. 
So now we've got a few interesting things at the top of our dashboard when we log in. I think it's quite interesting to see the world markets here at first glance and then to see a chart that starts with the US as the default, but you can look at other markets around the world. So now we've got perhaps what's for us a bit more of an interesting dashboard now when we log in. So I would encourage you to play around with the widgets here and design the dashboard that works for you. All right, so here is our custom updated dashboard. And the next thing we're gonna look at is how to set up some alerts. This is a very common feature. We've got an example here that I've set up using Amazon. Let's click into it. So essentially what you've got is an alert name that you can set here and email preferences. So it's going to be emailed out to you. This is going just to me by default, but I could add other people to the list. I can select a company by searching for it here and then adding it to the list. And I can indicate what type of information I want to get alerts for. So I can get news alerts, key developments, filings, event calendar, etc. And each of these I can drill into and specify specifically what events I want. So if I want to get notified about something like a, a dividend or a split, I can just add that to the list and I hit save at the end and I've got my alert list. So you can create all sorts of alerts and it can be very helpful for staying up to date on current company information. Let's go back to alerts. So that was me editing an alert, but I'll just click create new alert. There you go. You enter the name, uh, the, the subject for the email. If you want to enter that, uh, add all the companies you want here and the types of alerts that you want to get. So it's a great way to stay current with timely market information. One area of the dashboard that's interesting to point out is called financials glossary. If you click into it, you'll see that there are all sorts of financial terms that are defined based on different categories. Let's look at the balance sheet, for example. We can see then for cash and equivalents on a company's current assets, there is a data item ID, there is an Excel plugin formula, and there is a definition that we can click into and we can see all the things that are included in cash and equivalents. So later when you're auditing financial statements of companies, really digging into them to understand them, you may want to refer back to this financials glossary so that you can take a closer look at what might be included in goodwill, for example, or say restricted cash. Let's get a good definition of restricted cash, escrow funds, for example, or cash held in trust. So this is a great reference material and can be cross-referenced with the Excel plugin that we'll be exploring in later lessons. One final area that we're going to look at under my cap IQ is settings. So go into settings and here is where there's a few things you may want to change or should be aware of. Okay. And you can scroll through all of these on your own, but I'll show you some of the highlights. One is, the region and particularly the currency. So if you click in to regional, I have the default setting as seeing companies financials in their reported currencies, but you could override that, for example, and pick us dollars. And then you would hit save. If you wanted to see everything in us dollars, you can set your time zone as well that you want to have as your main setting. So let's just click back. You can explore these on your own. You could set up hotkeys to quickly navigate by creating shortcuts. So here you go. There are already some defaults. If you want to quickly go to a company tier sheet, which we'll be exploring soon is very common uh, tool to access. You just press alt one. Let's hit cancel there. Let's go to data specific settings and click on financials. So these are default settings that will appear for you. The default period that I like to have is annual, but you could change that to be quarterly or year to date or last 12 months, for example. 
you could prefer to not view consolidated financial statements, for example. And if you look at charts, you can pre-select what the automatically displayed charts will be. So if there's certain metrics that you want to focus on, like say forward price to earnings ratio, you could add that to pre-selected charts. So you can spend some time going through all of these under the financial section. Let's go back to settings. So those are a few highlights. There's really not too much you have to change here. The key things you want to be aware of are reporting currency and time zone, which you can select with regional, hotkeys to create shortcuts and move around quickly, and then financials and data sources, which you can change here. Those are the key settings that you may want to tweak.